Good morning, folks. We're starting with an NRAO animation depicting the coma of Comet Lemon. They fully analyzed the comas of this and Comet Ison and determined that the comets definitively produced organic materials in those comas. The atmospheres of the comets can produce organic compounds. In more comet news, NASA has put out their atmospheric interaction stance between comet siding spring and Mars. They discuss micrometeors and some minor electrical interactions in the form of umbrella auroras on the red planet. If you haven't seen our Siding Spring series, it's on our channel page and linked for you right below this video. More importantly, linked below is the Climate Change series, and the hits just keep on coming. University of Wisconsin at Madison. In as plain English as you get, the observations show global cooling, but our mathematical models say it should be warming. This means there's something missing. The scramble begins to explain the divergence between modeling and observation and, well, here's a big clue. And another one. Folks, climate change is real. It involves extreme shifts across temperature and precipitation ranges, and most who get through the climate change series with an open mind agree. Our star calls the shots. On to El Nino, may be a bit of a dud. While still expected to come this fall, the oceanic heating isn't as strong as before. And by the way, been seeing a lot of this talk online about the oceans getting hotter and hotter. Talk about parroting mainstream media. The oceans follow the same back and forth as the air. Some parts are cooler, not warmer. Anyway, we come to the Pacific with Julio's worst missing Hawaii to the north, Genevieve heading further north to join the big dogs in tropical retirement. Pretty nice day down under. That high pressure should be dominating most of the land here. In Europe, just look at that low in the North Atlantic. This ramped wind speeds in Scotland caused flooding in England, wild lightning along the mainland coastlines, and it is not done yet. The worst weather today, however, will actually be coming to North America. When the differential in temperature is this large, the energy exchange is too. The temperatures follow the winds, but we have very strong high and low pressure cells here, and where they meet, the alerts will come roaring. Severe weather expected in the east with flash flood warnings extending up into Ontario and Quebec. Meanwhile, the northwest and southwest should expect unusual rainfall totals and possibly some severe storms. Kicking to space weather, where the strongest of the coronal hole streams peaked out last night just under 600 kilometers per second. This time, the density fell away in kind, leaving less of an effect geomagnetically. Although the sensitive electron flux did take a beating, we saw some low-energy proton surges. The impact calls for another Uyen candidate, and that's likely the East Pacific development expected this week. X-ray flux shows another day of weak solar flaring, and the sunspots really don't appear ready to change that one bit. The departing spots are small and decaying, while the incoming grouping looks to have beta magnetics and is turning this way now, but utter silence is expected. For those new here and who have missed our discussions about the Earth-facing solar quiet, where the sun seems to shy away from any activity in Earth's direction, we will revisit that topic very soon. Top eruption thread are the plasma filaments thin dark ropes here. We'll check out the coronal holes and more in our shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.